In this video, I'm going to do an example of calculating various parameters of current in a wire. So in this example, we're going to say we have a gold wire that has a diameter of 0.7 millimeters diameter. It is 60 meters long. And there's an electric field throughout this wire that has a magnitude of 0.5 volts per meter. And I want to calculate everything I can. Resistance, the voltage across the from the ends of the wire, the current, the current density, the power, uh, even the drift velocity. Uh, why do I want to calculate these things? Well, let's because I can. Okay, let's go ahead and, and find out everything we know. Okay, so the the gold wire we know it's gold it says okay so that that's telling us some information we there are tables that have uh parameters for gold wire we know that gold has a, a resistivity of uh, 2.44 times 10 to the minus 8 si units which is ohm uh meters we also know that gold has a char a uh, carrier density, a charge carrier density of five times ten to the twenty-eight uh, atom or particles per meter cubed. Okay, so we have this information from the fact that it's gold and things we can look up, as well as now the physical di dimensions of the diameter and length. So, uh, the first up we'll go ahead and calculate is the uh, resistance because we know the resistance is given by the resistivity times the length over the area parameters we, we are given here. And so this is just a matter of uh, uh, right, reset 2.44 times 10 to the minus 8, the length is 60 area I have to be careful to convert so we have 5 pi and then uh, r cubed which is going to be r cubed r squared and pi r squared my spherical <laughs> my spherical wire uh, 4 thirds pi r cubed no uh, 3.5 times 10 to the minus 4 which is the radius squared so they gave us the diameter we need the radius in meters squared Okay, and then I my all of this in in my calculator says we have a resistance of 3.8 ohms. Okay, so there we've we've calculated the resistance. That's one down. All right, the since I have a constant electric field, I know the potential difference across the ends is the integral across that entire distance. But since the um, we're saying it's a wire in a straight line and the electric field is constant, the change in potential is just that electric field multiplied by the length. And so the length is 60 meters, the field is one half, so the voltage difference from the ends is in fact 30 volts, now V is gone. Okay, gold is can be approximated as an ohmic material which allows me to now get to the current itself because I know that delta V is equal to the current times the resistance. And so I is equal to um, V over R, which is 30 divided by 3.8 or 7.89 amps. Okay, so there's the, the current. Uh, next, I want to do the current density. So the current density is a parameter just of the metal, not of the wire itself. And so the current density, then, is the current divided by the cross-sectional area of the wire. Uh, we also know, I mean, from... Uh, from the discussion of this, a derivation of all these terms, that another relationship between the uh, the current density and things we know is that it's the electric field divided by the resistivity. 
the resistivity is defined as the electric field over the current density. And so we, in fact, know all of these things. And, and we can calculate it either way. If we just take the electric field, which is here, 0.5, divided by the resistivity, 2.44 times 10 to the minus 8, we, we get uh, 2.05 times 10 to the 7, and this, so this is amps, amp, <laughs> amps, and I wrote I, amps per meter squared. You can also then just calculate it directly from here, since we've calculated the current, 7.8 eight nine divided by again pi r squared three point five times ten to the minus four squared we get the same thing that's useful check to do that make sure we didn't have any calculator funniness in our calculation we get the same answer each time all right so there's the uh, current density now let's go ahead and calculate the the power and so the power is given by uh, the current times the voltage difference. It can also be given by um, I squared times the resistance or the voltage difference squared over the, uh, over the resistance, the voltage difference, uh, delta for voltage difference. Um, uh, this is probably the easiest way since I have both of those. The current is 7.8. 8, 9, and the voltage difference was 30, and so we get 237 watts. Um, if I were thinking about that, I would say, eh, you know, that's uh, pretty high. <laughs> I have a, a 3.35 millimeter wire uh, uh, pulling 237 watts. Uh, I'm probably melting that wire in a hurry. But Nonetheless, we'll say instantaneously before our wire evaporates, vap vaporizes, it's uh, pulling 237 watts of power. Okay, so there's the power. Now we finally uh, want to do the drift velocity is the last is the last object. Well, the how we calculated the um, the current density is the number of charge carriers times the charge times the drift velocity. So we can drift velocity, J over N, Q, which these parameters we've already had. The current density, 2.05 times 10 to the uh, 7. And then the uh, charge, num uh, number of charge carriers we had was 5 times 10 to the 28. 5 times uh, 10 to the 28 times the uh, charge, which is the fundamental unit of charge, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And so using the procedure of, of uh, minimal calculator error, I'm going to do some of this uh, by hand. So 10 to the 28, 10 to the negative 19 gives me 10 to the negative 9. And then... Um, Oh, sorry, 10 to the positive 9, of course. And then uh, 10 to the positive 7 divided by 10 to the positive 9 gives me a 10 to the minus 2. And so now I have just uh, 2.05 uh, divided by 5, and, and that divided by 100, essentially. Take care of that. So I plug that into my calculator, and I get 4.1 times 10 to the minus 3 meters per second, which is in sort of ballpark of the types of drift velocities we were considering. Okay, so so this was pretty much just using these expressions to uh, calculate everything from, from given the electric field. Um, just as sort of a review, I'm not going to go through all the derivations, but sort of a review where all these these expressions came from now that we've we've used them. You know, it starts with the current is defined as the rate of change of a charge transfer, which uh, in a wire, this becomes the number of charge carriers times the the amount of charge of each carrier times the drift velocity times the area. 
And so this is a, a definition. This is what it turns out to be in a wire. That's the cross-sectional area of the wire comes in. And so the current density was just the area, the intensity over the area, and then is just NQ, uh, the charge, number of charge carriers and the drift velocity. We defined our uh, resistivity to be the uh, constant proportionality between the electric field and the current density. So this is this is now where we're invoking Ohm's law, which says uh, the current density that you get for a given electric field is proportional to that electric field, and that constant of proportionality is one over the resistivity. And so then, uh, if we rewrite this as E is equal to rho times J, then electric field is the voltage over the length, and then the uh, J is the current over the area, and then from this we get V is equal to I times the resistance, where the resistance is the resistivity times the length over the area. And so that's sort of walking through from, from the first relationships to the last, where these come from, and then the, the power is just the current times the, the voltage difference across any resistor, which can always be, and then just substituting in that relationship is I squared R or V squared over R.